So you might have insulin resistance long before your doctor tells you, and your body has been giving you clues for years that are often misunderstood as nothing more than the normal effects of aging. So I'm going to do a longer video where I go through all of these different symptoms and signs of insulin resistance, but right now we're just going to run through them really, really fast. So there's obesity, being overweight, type 2 diabetes, there's migraines, headaches, blurry vision, dizziness, brain fog, hearing loss, floaters in your eyes, spots, dark spots, light sensitivity, uh, bad night vision, double vision, dementia and Alzheimer's disease, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, childhood obesity, fertility issues like PCOS and erectile dysfunction, fatty liver, sarcopenia, high blood pressure, inflammation, skin issues like dark patches, skin tags, acne, increased thirst, increased hunger and cravings, food noise, frequent urination, fatigue, low energy, sleepy after meals, difficulty staying asleep at night, mood, irritability, hair loss, abnormal hair growth on the face, especially for women, increased infections like yeast, bacteria, skin infections, UTIs, neuropathy, um, high triglycerides and low HDL, high blood sugar, so not the type 1 diabetes, but the type 2 diabetes, reactive hypoglycemia, gout, thyroid issues, H. pylori, SIBO, dysbiosis, uh, group B strep, especially in, in pregnant women, raises inflammation, it affects digestion, less minerals being absorbed by the body, um, lower leptin, satiety. If you have any of these symptoms and think that you might have insulin resistance, you'll want to get your fasting insulin level checked. Now you may have gone to your doctor and they may have checked your glucose and your A1C and everything is normal. But guess what? You can be insulin resistant for years and even decades before it shows up on glucose levels or A1C levels. That's why it's important to check your fasting insulin level. So you want it to be somewhere between three and seven for American and UK units. If you're in Australia, you want it to be between 18 and 48 P moles. Um, then you want to do an insulin response test, which is like a glucose tolerance test, only they check insulin at every hour. You want the test to be at least three hours long, and you want your insulin to not go over 40 during this test. If it goes higher than 40, that's insulin resistance. For Australia, it's 240 p mole. Then you also want to check your lipids, your triglycerides, and your HDL. If triglycerides are high and HDL is low, that's insulin resistance. You want to check your inflammatory markers like CRP, and you want to check for H. pylori because that is a common thing that often causes insulin resistance in a lot of people. In the next video, we're going to do a deep dive into all of these symptoms. So if you want to learn more, I'll see you over there.